Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and if you guys are wondering about the captain's hat, well, all I have to say is I'm the captain now. And today, we're going to be looking at an article from our friend Mr. Evan Wanish here over at BucksNation.com where he talks about potential Buccaneers breakout candidates for 2024. I want to go over the couple of players that Evan selected and talk about whether or not I agree or disagree with Evans selections. I know this article was uploaded a couple of days ago, but I think it will be a fun one to review. So the first one that he has selected is Cade Otten. And now Cade Otten finds himself in a very interesting situation this upcoming year with the Bucks. As he is far and away, much like what he was last year, the number one tight end for the Bucks going forward. He was fourth on the team last year in receiving yards. He was fourth in receptions. He was fifth in targets, only one target behind Trey Palmer. And it seems like he very well, by the way, he was second on the team in receiving touchdowns. And it, and it very much seems like he's going to have that type of role again this upcoming season. Now, in his first year, Otten put up actually just a smidge less numbers in 2022 than in 2023. So, I guess in terms of breakout, what do you define that as, right? Does that mean that k going to get 650 yards, is going to get seven touchdowns, something along those lines? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting question. It all depends on how Liam Cohen wants to use k Otten in this offense going forward. I think that Otten has seen a fair amount of usage in his first two years in the league. He is going into year number three, and then after that will be a contract year. So now is kind of the time for Otten to take that leap. I think he's shown he can be a serviceable starting tight end in this league, but I think, you know, that next step is can he show to be a, a quality you know, starting tight end in this league. Like, not just like, hey, he's a fine starter and it is what it is, but like to really set himself apart and be one of those top half tight ends in the league. That's kind of the next step for Otten. Will he make it? I don't know. We'll see. I could see very similar usage and numbers to what he put up in 2023, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I really don't. It's just kind of where I see Otten right now, unless we see something really change in this offense in terms of how the tight end position is used, which is an, is a big possibility. So we will see. The next player that Evan has is KJ Britt, a guy that we've talked about a lot here on the channel in the past couple of weeks, so to, sp so to speak. And KJ Britt's a guy that I, I do believe uh, can break out for this Bucks team. I mean, you take a look at the overall stats this past year, nothing great, right? Nothing too flashy. 29 total tackles, one tackle for loss, one pass deflection. He did start four games, started the last couple of games of the year in terms of the playoff games, and also started a couple of games in the regular season. Um, or I guess I should say he started four regular season games whenever Devin White was dealing with those injuries. And then he did start both playoff games over Devin White, even though he was fully healthy. He had 15 tackles in the playoffs, one tackle for loss, one pass deflection. I like Britt a lot. I, I think that he's a very smart type of player. He is also going into a contract year this upcoming season, so he's going to have more juice, more fire to to really get going and and put some stats out there, right? And I think that the Bucks are going to give him a lot of opportunities to do so. If it does work out, hey, the guy's still only 25 years old, and I think he's very productive in both pass coverage and even as a run stopper as well, just from even taking a look at some film from the Detroit Lions game, like I came away pretty impressed with the overall awareness of KJ Britt and just his ability to read the field. So if we can see that level of KJ Britt for like an entire season, the Bucks have themselves a good player on their hands and a guy who can start at middle linebacker throughout the year. I do agree 100%. I do expect KJ Britt to to break out and 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 take that next leap forward and possibly even be the number one guy going forward after Levante David is uh finally, you know, done in retiring from the NFL. The final player that Evan has selected here is cornerback Zion McCollum. So, you know, some pretty safe selections here from Evan in terms of his uh, uh, picks right here. But again, like all three guys are guys that 
you know, makes sense to kind of list his breakout guys in terms of Zion McCollum. Look, the Bucks traded away Carlton Davis. And Zion McCollum, like I've I've said it before and I'll say it again, like you take a look at the advanced stats, like McCollum was not bad last year in terms of his overall defensive play. He started nine games for the Bucks last year, 17 total games played, finished fifth on the team in tackles last year in terms of passes defended, was tied for second with Carlton Davis, something that I really don't think a lot of people have, have really looked at in terms of, you know, what McCollum was able to do last year. I feel like a lot of people have focused in on, oh, well, he was picked on for a couple of games. I think even in that Lions game, he was picked on. So, boo, he stinks. But, like, let's take a deeper look at it, right? I feel like that that's super important as well. I want to take a look again at the advanced stats, something that I like to do for, for cornerbacks specifically. Take a look at completion percentage allowed. McCollum allowed a worse completion percentage when targeted than Carlton Davis, then Jamel Dean, then Antoine Winfield Jr. technically, then Christian Izian. Now, he was the most targeted cornerback on the Bucks or most targeted player on the Buccaneers defense last year. So again, to allow a completion percentage of 59.8 when targeted, pretty good in my opinion. Pretty good. So you also take a look at what he was able to do in terms of passer rating when targeted. You're going to look at that 91.0, and that doesn't look great, right? But it is important to remember that was still a better passer rating allowed when targeted than Carlton Davis, than Winfield Jr., than Jamel Dean. That's just that's just the facts of it all, man. That's just the facts of it all. Like Dean, or sorry, McCollum really showed up last year. And that's one of the biggest reasons as to why the Bucks felt comfortable trading away Carlton Davis, because they feel like they have a number two cornerback in Zion McCollum who is ready to take that leap forward. Out of all these guys, right, out of these three, Otten, Britt, and McCollum, like McCollum's the guy that I would say has the best potential, let's say right? He's got all the tools. He's got the athleticism. He's got the advanced stats to back him up from last year. Um, he's got a, you know, KJ Britt has also got a great running mate in, in Levante David. Jamel Dean is there with Zion McCollum as well. Like I think McCollum has got all the tools to be a starting cornerback in this league. It's just going to be a matter of, can he put it all together? Um, it, honestly, it may be a very similar rise to what we saw with Dean, Right, a very comparable corner, just a freak athlete, was a bit raw, but showcased some good stuff early on in his career, and you know, has been a multi season starter for the Bucks, as I adjust my captain's hat here, for the Bucks in his career. I could see a very similar trajectory here with Zon McCollum, and it would not surprise me at all. Um, a couple of more guys that you want to talk about in terms of guys breaking out like is Trey Palmer a candidate I don't know it's possible maybe Meh. I don't know man like Graham Barton I you know potential breakout but like maybe if you want to throw out some other guys like offensive line does Cody Mock break out does Luke Gedeke break out I mean a lot of people have kind of been sleeping on some of the offensive line talent that the Bucks have in my opinion those guys could possibly be options as well I mean, I know a lot of people are going to take the easy route and say, like, a Yaya Diaby, but, like, does Joe try and Shawinka finally break out? I know, like, a lot of people have been kind of done with him, but is that a possibility? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But, uh, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions about this down in the comments section below. Do you guys agree with my takes? Do you agree with some of the players that Evan picked? Let me know your thoughts and opinions about this down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. As always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.